Oh, hi everyone. I actually had a completely different video planned for today, but with all these different work things, I couldn't quite put out that video, but I still wanted to be faithful to try and put out a video every week. And so here I am. So I think today or tomorrow is the first day of Hanukkah and I love Hanukkah. I expect it to be more cold at this time of year, but it is not for some reason. And so the atmosphere is not sort of meshing well with the vibe of Hanukkah, but still, I love Hanukkah. The next video is going to be a video about souvganiyot. If any of you have ever had a souvganiya, it's so, so, so yummy and scrumptious and delicious. I will link down below for you guys what that is so you can try them the next time that you're here. But apart from that, I just wanted to make a different type of video that I've never tried before. I am writing an article right now for Israel Today about Kanye West. And I know that I'm not the first person in history to write about Kanye West. And maybe I should correct myself and tell you guys that the article is not about Kanye West. I recently saw a, an article in which the title was Kanye West says that Jews should forgive Hitler. Now, here's the thing. You could never, ever, ever, ever say that in Israel without like completely being boycotted. And so a lot of people have been tweeting back and saying that they disagree with this. So here's something from me that might be a bit controversial. I disagree with so much of what Kanye says in general, his approach, his tactics of trying to convey what he's trying to say. But if there's something I do agree on is that Jews should forgive Hitler. Now, before, you unsubscribe from me if you already are or before you're like what on earth is she trying to say let me just preference the fact that this is not a notion that i'm getting from myself but from my holocaust survivor grandmother my great grandparents went through the holocaust so here's a little tiny background about my family my great grandparents on my mother's side lived in romania and they had my grandmother out of wedlock. So during the war, while my great grandfather was at home with my grandmother, Nazis came in and took him, but they didn't take the baby because they couldn't actually link the fact that she is his daughter. Then they sort of left her there. My great grandmother came back. I think the neighbor sort of heard the baby crying and took her into the house. The long story short is my great grandmother and grandmother hid in the basement of her employer's house because she was a housekeeper for someone who was, I guess, very wealthy. The woman said to her, listen, I'll take your baby. I will raise her as my own. You go and just save your life. And my great grandmother said, on my dead body, that's not gonna happen. And the woman let them stay in her basement for the whole duration of the war. They only had, I think it was bread and potatoes. Now think of the fact that food was very scarce. Once in a blue moon, they would have like a bit of butter and maybe a bit of cheese and just hot water. That's all they had for years. And so that was on their side. In the meantime, my great grandfather was in a concentration camp with uh, having medical experimentations done on him. He was a, a really strong athlete. And I think they wanted to see how his body would respond to all of that torture, how much the human body can withstand. And so he actually did survive that. But what eventually happened is that he came out of that situation completely, of course, a lot of them because of the torture, they, were, they became deranged or mentally ill. And I'm sure he tried his best in life to take care of his family and, and was a loving father, but he was also sort of violent. So my grandmother, sort of grew up in an environment that wasn't wasn't the best in that sense. What also happened is that at the end of the war, when they were able to reconnect and come to Israel, they were caught on the way to Israel and brought to Cyprus, in which they stayed in refugee camps. And of course you have, I mean, if you've seen refugee camps today, it was even worse back then. It was cold, she had holes in her shoes, they barely had food, it was just not good conditions at all. And eventually they came to Israel, but even after that, my grandmother did not have an easy life. She went through two divorces in which both of them were not faithful to her. She went through cancer three times. She was sexually abused. She, she went through so much. And here's the point that I'm trying to make. My grandmother was the most forgiving person that I know. She possessed more noble character in her little pinky than people possess in their whole bodies. Like this woman was so soft hearted and she forgave, she forgave. And I saw and witnessed people her age that, or even my age, or even my own self that were just bitter, bitter from life, bitter from everything. And I know from my own life how easy it is to become bitter. I mean, it doesn't take much in life. Life is plenty hard. 
in order for someone to become bitter. Here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that Hitler, if he was alive, should just be let off the hook or something crazy like that. Like this was a crazy, murderous, despicable man who caused absolute harm to millions and millions and millions of people for generations. Like the damage that he created wasn't just within the Jewish people. It was other nations. It was the whole world. Until today, we are paying a price for it. But my example for forgiveness as a person who didn't go through the Holocaust directly is from the people who actually went through it. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a second, if my grandmother, who is a Holocaust survivor, whose life was completely altered because of the despicable acts of Hitler, then isn't she the ultimate example of what it actually means to forgive? Because forgiveness really does not mean letting someone else off the hook, like it really doesn't. It means that for your own mental health and your own peace, you are choosing a noble way of living. Now the thing is this, my grandmother is not the inventor of forgiveness. I think that forgiveness and true forgiveness is only possible through God. And so when I look at Yeshua, when I look at Jesus on the cross, and he's looking at people who have tortured him, who have put him on that cross, the people that have betrayed him and mocked him and spat at him and beat him up and flogged him, I mean, just from one slap alone, I think it would take me like a year to forgive it. You know what I mean? And he is going through it right in the midst of it on the cross. And they're telling him, why don't you just get yourself down from off the cross? Like what you were so powerful back then. Why can't you just do that now? And he looks at them and he says, God, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Wow. What a statement. They don't know what they're doing. So here's me trying to tie it all back to Kanye's words, saying that Jews should forgive Hitler today. I'm trying to think to myself this. What happens if Jews don't forgive? Let's just say on a global level, on a national level, on an individual level, what happens to people when they don't forgive? I think eventually what happens to people is that they seep into that bitterness and a lot, a lot of bad continues to happen from it. I mean, you guys can look at your own life, I can look at my own life, and I can see how my life became so much more miserable when I didn't forgive. I started hurting other people, I was hurting myself, my whole life was suffering because of it. Then you sort of have to ask yourself the question, like, am I humble enough to be able to ask for forgiveness when I know that I've done wrong? And am I humble enough to be able to receive it when someone asks forgiveness from me? So here's a thought that I would really, really love you guys to actually look at and think about really, really earnestly, without judgment. We don't know a lot about Hitler's childhood, but we do know that he went through some significantly hard things. This is not a justification for the cruelty that he later on just unleashed into the world. But I'm wondering to myself, who of those people that hurt Hitler didn't ask for forgiveness? And what would have happened if they did ask for forgiveness? If the people that hurt him would have come and said, you know what, I was wrong. Could it be that all the bitterness that was stored in him from the hurt of life, from people being harsh towards him, from all the different aspects of what could make a person bitter, if he would have actually forgiven for all of that, would he choose vengeance? And here's where I want to sort of challenge myself and the people around me, because I'm not saying that forgiveness is an easy thing at all. I mean, it takes really, really strong character to be able to forgive. I'm actually more scared of what will happen if I don't ask for forgiveness or don't receive forgiveness than what will happen if I withhold it or refuse it. Because I think that the only way to heal, the only way to move forward is if we forgive and ask for forgiveness. And if not, only bad can come out of it. And so I'm not acting in this blasé way like Kanye was being like, just let it go. Just stop forcing it on everyone. No, this is a very, 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 very real hurt. The Holocaust is a very, very real thing and it lives on in the hearts of the, in the traumas of this country. It is felt through and through. There's nothing blasé about it. But what I am saying is that if we ever want to heal, if we ever want to stop things like that from happening in the future, forgiveness has to be a regular part of our character and who, what we choose to be. Forgiveness is the most noble and the highest route a person can take. And so that's honestly a reminder for me because I can be struggling to forgive when someone says that I've hurt them or done something that's been wrong. I always feel this tension of struggling like, 
what if I'm not wrong? What if that person's wrong? And the temptation is always there to be like, no, I'm right. This person is wrong. And that's not the way forward. That's not a godly example. And it's not the person that I want to be. And I've been really, really challenged in this past week to look at myself and my character and think, okay, what are the things that I need to change so that I am not part of that problem, but I'm part of the ongoing solution for healing in this world. So all of this is not to preach at a certain person or to act as if I'm perfect and someone else is not and everyone else is doing it wrong. It's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that I truly, truly believe that choosing forgiveness is for our benefit on a micro level and on a macro level. So if you, like I, struggle to forgive or struggle to offer forgiveness, then consider the things that I've said because it just might change your life. That's not even an exaggeration. Again, we don't know if Hitler would have changed, if someone would have asked him for forgiveness and he could have been released from the bitterment that he was entrapped into. I love my people. I hate the fact that the Holocaust happened. I hate it so, so, so much. I do think that an important question has arisen and I wanna have a conversation with you about it. So comment down below what you think about the issue of forgiveness, the Holocaust, Kanye, if you want. We're not slamming Kanye, but we're just talking about the subject in general. I really wanna know what you guys think and I hope this video has been good for you guys. If you guys want more videos like this, then let me know. And just to wrap this whole thing up, I have discovered that at least 80% of my viewers aren't subscribed and I want you to be part of this little tiny community and it also just really helps to support my channel. So if you're not subscribed and you wanna be, you're very, very, very welcome to do so. And also you can hit the notification bell uh, to know when a new video comes out. Also just feel free to share this with other people. The whole point of this channel is to be able to be a light and to do some good in the world. So hit the subscribe button, comment down below what you think. And if you're not new here, then welcome back. I'm always, always happy to see you guys. And I will see you guys in a video very, very soon.